Now we look at how to perform inferences about a population proportion using cluster random sampling. Denote by P the proportion of members in the population that have a particular characteristic of interest. A point estimator of P is given by the expression here on slide 26. So it's the sum of uh, the X sub I's divided by the sum of the cap M sub I's. Now we've seen the uh, cap M sub I's, but we haven't seen the X sub I's yet. Well, the X sub I's represent the number of members in cluster I that have the characteristic of interest. So the numerator, the sum of the X sub I's, is the total number of members in the entire sample that have the characteristic of interest. So the estimator p hat is the proportion of members in the sample that have that characteristic of interest. Now note that uh, even though p hat is the sample proportion, it differs from other estimators we have seen with the same name in that both the numerator and the denominator are random variables. Hence p hat is a ratio estimator and is biased as an estimator of p. On slide 27, we have uh, an estimator of the variance of the sampling distribution of this p hat. All right, it's given by this expression here at the top of the slide. And at the right hand side, you'll see that it uh, involves a sum of uh, squared differences between the x sub i's and these quantities p hat times cap m sub i. We'll look in, at a shortcut formula for calculating that on the next slide. And once we have the estimated variance associated with or of p hat. We take its square root to get the estimated standard error. All right, so there that is at the bottom of page 27. Okay, the shortcut formula for the sum of squared deviations between the x sub i's and uh, the p hat times uh, cap m sub i's is given by this expansion formula on slide 28. And so it involves uh, the sum of the squared uh, x's it involves the square of p hat, the sum of the squared cap m sub i's, and the uh, sum of the cap m sub i's times the x sub i's. So these are all summary statistics that we will need to calculate in order to efficiently calculate the sum of squared differences. Once we have the estimated standard error of p hat, we can multiply it by two to get the approximate 95% margin of error associated with p hat. And then once we have both the point estimator and the margin of error, then we construct the confidence limits as usual. All right, so here we have on the bottom of slide 29 formula for the approximate 95% confidence interval estimate for the population proportion P. All right, so let's look at an example of this. Again, continuing with the examples that we've been looking at up to this point. Uh, in addition to being asked about their income, the residents uh, of the sample were also asked whether they rent or own their homes. The data are given on the next slide. And so here we have the cap M sub I's, these are the number of residents in the i cluster. And then cap X sub I is the number of renters. All right, so, and again, these, these values are paired. We have to keep that in mind. Using these data, compute a point estimate of P, the proportion of residents who live in rented housing, compute the approximate margin of error associated with this estimate, and then in addition, construct an approximate 95% confidence interval estimate for P, the proportion of people who live in rented housing. All right, so here we have the summary statistics and information about the population that we know. So we know that cap N, the uh, total number of clusters, is 415. Our sample size is 25 clusters. All right, and we have the sum of the x's, the sum of the squared x's, uh, the sum of the cap m sub i's, and the sum of the squared cap m sub i's. Notice that there are 72 people in the overall sample that rent. So a point estimator of p, uh, given by p hat, is 72, the sum of the x sub i's over the sum of the cap m sub i's. All right, the uh, sum of the cap m sub i's, the total number of members in the sample is 151. All right, and so uh, p hat is equal to 0.4768. This uh, sum of squared differences between the x sub i's and the p hat times cap m sub i's, which is required to calculate the estimated variance of p hat, all right, is obtained by plugging in the appropriate summary statistics into this expansion formula, and we get 12.733. 
All right, we plug that in here, all right, and uh, into this formula for the estimated variance of p hat, which turns out to be 5.467 approximately times 10 to the negative fourth power. We take the square root of that, right, to get the estimated standard error of p hat, which uh, that turns out to be 0 0.02338, and then we multiply that by 2 to get the approximate 95% margin of error associated with p hat. All right, and that approximate 95% margin of error is 0 0.04676. And so we combine the point estimate with the approximate margin of error to get our approximate 95% confidence interval estimate of P. All right, that confidence interval ranges from 0 0.4301 up to 0.5236. And so we would say that we are approximately 95% confident that the proportion of uh, people who rent their homes in this city is between 0 0.4301 and 0 0.5236. Or we could re-express it and say that we're approximately 95% confident that the uh, percentage of people that rent is between 43.01% and 52.36%. All right, so that finishes off this particular set of notes, and so we'll stop the video.